It's a very nice kit from Special Hobby. It has some added experts such as resin and also photo wedge. Hello, this is BJ from Hearns Hobbies and I'm gonna be looking at one of these kits today. It's a Special Hobby Harrier. So this is actually the C Harrier. It's the, uh, which one is it again? The FA2. So this is like an upgraded version of the C Harrier. It's um, the fight and ground attack version. And it's a very nice kit from Special Hobby. This is out of their high tech range which means it has some added experts such as resin and also photo wedge to enhance the details. Okay, so let's have a look, close look at the box art. So it's a reasonably simple type box art. Now the Eastern European type manufacturers tend to have this quite simple look about their products, which is a good thing. You just need a good representation of the model itself, just so you get an idea of what it's gonna look like. And uh, most of the uh, what we care about is the stuff that's on the inside. Okay, so. Let's open it up and have a look. Now, I don't know why, but Eastern European boxes are always very, very tight. So once we get through the challenge of getting this off, you get the challenge of putting all the bits together for the multimedia kit. <coughs> okay, so inside we've got a bag full of all the goodie bits. And then we've got the manual there as well. So I'll pop that to the side. Let's open this up and have a closer look at it all these parts. Okay, I'll put those to the side. All right, let's start off with the decals. Now, I'm not gonna take those out of their bag, just so they can remain quite fresh. What you will see is uh, there's a section of um, printed acetate. And that's a technique that was quite often used. Uh, I guess I started doing that about 10 years or so. Edward did that as well. for doing the instrument panels. So it gives this transparency type of effect, which makes the instruments look uh, quite realistic. Okay, let's do a bit of a zoom in here. Okay, so there's the transparencies. I'll spin this around. Okay, so you see how it's just black on clear acetate. Now you just got to cut those out and then have those affixed to the back of the cockpit. We have quite a variety of decals here. So there's markings for high visibility and also low visibility. But there's enough sort of anniversary type or special uh, artwork and stenciling to make it really interesting rather than just really bland gray. Okay, so here are all the decals. Okay, so on the back, you'll be able to see the fret of brass photo etch. It's quite interesting, these round ones here uh, actually used for aligning the fins on the uh, missiles, so on the side wires and such. The fins are actually separate bits, so you fit these onto the end, so one on the back, one on the front, and then the markings help you align all the fins properly. It takes out all the guesswork. Okay, then you have all the really fine type stuff. There's the, uh, the cockpit there. So you've got a photo edge cockpit, and then you have the clear acetate which is mounted behind it and you have a very three-dimensional look because sometimes photo wedge can look a bit flat because you basically only have three levels there. You've got the top surface, you've got the middle surface, and then you've got the actual zero or the cutout section. So having another layer behind there just adds to that dimension. And these are all the fins for the missiles. Okay, so photo wedge fins, as you imagine, they'll be super fine as they should be. I mean, it is a, a small scale at 172. Okay, so that's quite nice there. Let's pop that aside. All right, so what do we have here? We've got some transparencies. Okay, it's probably best if I just leave it in that zoom mode. It's probably gonna be, actually, it'll be easier to see if I take these out of here. Okay, so these are a pretty traditional sort of split. So more modern kits tend to have options now where it's either glued together in a closed position, or you can have them split like this. You see how they're pretty clear. I don't think you get much clearer than this in 72. You see there's slight distortion, but that's due to the thickness and the curvature of these uh, clear parts. You can see the lines underneath how they're going to be bent. Okay, but all in all, I think they're well polished and they're fairly clear. Okay, so the clear bits there. Okay, so there's two parts of the cockpit and another lens. Then we have our resin parts. 
This is a nice touch. These are actually resin seats. Okay, these are the ejection seats. And these are the parts that are quite often changed over to resin. Let's take those out of the bag as well. Because there are quite a lot of um, sharp details, I guess, that you won't be able to get in injection molding. Okay, so you can see how fine the rails are on the sides there. Let's see if I can get that focus a bit better. Is that a sweet spot? It's probably better there. Okay, so you can see where the ejection handle is going to go around there. Side rails, also the back. See how sharp that is. Okay, so that's why these particular parts are quite often in resin. Okay, then you have your cockpit tub. Okay, so you got the back side, front side, instrument panel will be across here. And then we have all the finer parts, such as the joystick and other paraphernalia. Okay, so let's pop those back. All right, so these are the major parts of the multimedia, the resin and the photo etch parts. Now we're going to get into the actual injection molded parts. All right, so this part has all the major large components on it. So you get your fuselage sections and then the cockpit sections are separate and different nose cones. Actually, it's not different nose cones, they're in halves. Okay, and then nose cone, uh, the engine intakes. You can clearly see here, this is where the nozzles go for uh, the thrusters. Okay, so you get your, your single main turboprop engine and it just blows the air through these four points for propulsion. And that's where they used to swivel for your um, hovering uh, attributes. Okay, so you've got, uh, you've got your wings here. They're in halves. And then there's also a plastic cock cockpit there as well. And there's the bits. You could opt for those, but since they give you the resin ones, why would you? This is the undercarriage for the tips of the wings. You got your uh, horizontal stabilizers. Might just zoom in there just so you can have a close look at the surface detail. Okay, there's a cockpit section. There's a molded instrument panel there. Looks okay, but it's not flash. That's where the photo which one is going to be much better. There are the wings. You can see the, the really fine etched panel lines. Over here as well. So they're really concentrated on getting the surface detail really nice. And then as we go across here, be able to see where the nozzles go. So you can either have those in either direction. If you want to build this in flight mode, then you'll probably have those horizontal or you have those semi-vertical if it was in a landed pose. Again, it's got a really nice uh, surface etching. Get onto the nose section there. Okay, so that's where the cockpit is. One half of the nose, the other half. You got your uh, intake for the jet. There's a small undercarriage there for the wingtips. Because it had its main undercarriage just below the fuselage, just this point here. And then that little small, uh, where is it? There we go. That would just to keep it stable on the wingtips. Okay, and then you got your other half down here. Okay, so super nice surface detail. All right, then we get into some of the small sprues. Okay, so some of the finer details, you've got the drop tanks. These are the nozzles. You've got the ejection seat, which we'll probably leave out for the, uh, the resin one. Additional nozzles here. You've got the main undercarriage, main undercarriage wheels. There's your big, uh, the fan for the turbojet. Refueling probe. And there's a nose wheel as well. Okay, so let's have a quick look at that. Zoomed in. Okay, you can see there's really nice surface detail on these as well, just on the drop tanks. 
There's your refueling probe. There's the fan blades. They're quite visible, so that's a nice touch. And then you've got your, your nozzles right there. Undercarriage. Okay, so front wheel. Main undercarriage for the center of the fuselage. Then you've got more nozzles there again. Okay, so you can see a bigger one and a smaller one. So one for the front, one for the back. And there's the seat. And a few pylons. Okay, and then from there, we're left with the pylons and armament. Okay, so you've got the uh, sidewinders. Actually, the sidewinders there. You've got these other missiles. Don't really know which ones they are. But you notice how they just look like spears there. There's no actual um, uh, veins for guidance at all. So that's where you're going to use that uh, photo wedge uh, template on the front and the back and apply the veins in the right spot. You've got some bombs. And then additional pylons here. So, I'll zoom in on this. Okay, so you see how they're totally smooth. So you're going to have veins on the back and on the front. Got some pylons. More there. These are the bombs. Okay, so sidewinder without the uh, rear stabilizers. So they'll be photo etch. Got another one there. And then we've got some more pylons. Now these look like the um, the gun pods that go on the bottom, but they didn't show them being used in the instructions. So I guess you need to do a bit more research. They could be spares from a different version. Okay, so let's have a look at the uh, the manual. Here's our manual here with a bit of a the history about the aircraft itself. So these were actually used all the way up to. Uh, let's see. Started in 1988 for this particular version, and they were decommissioned in 2006. Okay, so on this side we've got the legend of all the parts. You can see the photo which being shown there and the, the printed acetate. So actually the construction is very condensed. Okay, so you usually you expect like you know a Tamiya type kit or any Japanese kit. This will have a lot more parts. So you just have to be very careful to view all these parts and make sure you put them in the right order. Okay, so obviously you want to get the cockpit or constructor first. So this is all about the seat, uh, instrument panel, and all the seat belts. And then obviously that is put into the cockpit tub, which is sandwiched between the fuselage uh, cockpit halves. And then you have the fan there, and that's sandwiched within the two main fuselage halves. At this point here, it also tells you to add weight. So it's important to note that because if you don't add the weight, you won't be able to add that at a later stage. And that's to make sure that it doesn't drop on its tail because on a real aircraft, the weight is normally in the center of the aircraft. But because this is all hollow, most of the weight is going to be at the tail. So weight in the nose is going to make sure it sits correctly on its undercarriage. And at this point, there's still some additional detail inside the cockpit area. So pay attention to that too before you squeeze it all together. And then we start adding the stores. Okay, so there's the gun pods. So they're the optional extras that I didn't see before because most of the stores are added at the end. There's a nose cone. Okay, from here we've got the wings. So wings are in halves. You've got this point here which is showing those uh, the undercarriage on the wingtips. Got the main undercarriage here as well. And then we start assembling the nozzles. They've got all your finer uh, sensors, they're all being put around the aircraft and then you've got your final stores so we've got the, uh, the clear cockpit and then you can choose how you want this armed you've got bombs, uh, anti-aircraft weaponry and such drop tanks and then we get into the options for the painting so this is a particular uh, color scheme for a anniversary edition and then we have our later low visibility schemes then these are uh, the stencil placements for the decals and that's for the anniversary version and they differ from actual combat versions so you've got two separate instructions there and then there's a little brief guide on what else you can get from special hobby okay so here we go so that's the special hobby 1 to 70 second scale sea harrier fa2 high-tech version which includes 
uh, resin for cockpit details and also photo wedge for seat belts and other bits and pieces. So great kit. Give it a go. Thank you for watching.